Switching to the other side of the globe, what helped with our success against Japan? Well, again, it was allies. And our biggest ally against Japan is China. China is supported by the United States during the war. We're supplying them with weapons and materials and food. And what the Chinese are able to do is keep a significant number of Japanese troops occupied in mainland China. That means fewer Japanese soldiers able to fight American soldiers out in the Pacific. The Chinese nationalists and Chinese communists had been fighting a civil war over control of China when World War II broke out. But they called a truce to that war. They, they stopped fighting each other so that they could work together, kind of, to repel the Japanese. China makes a significant contribution to World War II. It's part of the reason they'll get a seat on the Security Council in the United Nations. Only Russia suffered more casualties among the Allies than China. However, China is not our only ally in the Pacific against the Japanese. We also received support from British forces as well as Australian and New Zealand forces. Much like in Europe over Germany, America eventually will enjoy naval and air superiority over the Japanese. That really starts with the Battle of the Coral Sea. And at the Battle of the Coral Sea, the Japanese advance toward Australia is stopped. Australia is now a safe base of operations for Allied forces in the Pacific. Japan's drive to the east, heading towards Hawaii, is stopped after the Japanese are defeated at the Battle of Midway. And the Battle of Midway is also significant because four aircraft carriers from the Japanese Navy were sunk in that one battle. And what that means is that U.S. forces are going to have a big advantage in the sky in the remaining battles in the Pacific. Perhaps most importantly is the strategy that the Americans employed in the Pacific, and that was the leapfrogging strategy. Uh, American submarines and destroyers were having a lot of success sinking Japanese troop ships. These were ships transporting Japanese soldiers from one island to another. And after that success, the Japanese are not willing to try to move troops around to different islands. It's too big of a risk. So the American strategy that develops from that is we don't have to go to every single island. The Japanese have forces on a lot of islands throughout the Pacific. But rather than attack every single one of them, we will skip some of them and hit the other ones with air power and naval power and, and not allow them to get off that island. But we don't have to go conquer every single island. We can skip some and just keep moving closer and closer to Japan. The final reason for our success over Japan is the weapon that we or weapons that we used at the end of the war. And that is the atomic bomb. In late July of 1945, the new President Truman, who took over after Roosevelt died in 1945, wrote, uh, Truman issued what's called the Potsdam Proclamation, and that's P-O-T-S-D-A-M. And what the Pro Potsdam Proclamation said was it basically demanded that Japan surrender immediately. It did not work. Japan did not surrender. So on August 6, 1945, the first atomic bomb is dropped over the Japanese city of, of, of Hiroshima. We'll talk about that next, and let's look at the debate over the use of those atomic bombs. The bomb over Hiroshima killed 80,000 people immediately, and more than 50,000 are going to die from radiation. Now, there was some military significance to both Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but those were largely civilian casualties that we're talking about. Some members of the Japanese army, some military uh, bases, some military factories, but for the most part, those casualty numbers are mainly civilians. So then what are the arguments for using this awful weapon of destruction? Well. For starters, the scientists who built the bomb had estimated the casualties at only 20,000. Um, that's not to say that makes it right, 
But remember, nobody had ever used a weapon like this before, and they thought the damage would be far less. Second, throughout World War II, cities had been bombed. Civilians had been targeted. In fact, in March of 1945, the city of Tokyo had been extensively firebombed by the Allies. 100,000 people had died in those March 1945 firebombings of Tokyo. Another argument for using the bomb is that Victory in Europe Day, or VE Day, came on May 8th in 1945. And by that time, the American public is ready for the war to be over. However, officials estimated that Japan might be able to hold out for another 18 months. As we continued to move through the Pacific, the fighting became even more difficult. On the island of Iwo Jima and on the island of Okinawa, there are long and deadly campaigns to capture those islands from the Japanese. And what we were learning as we moved closer and closer to Japan was that Japanese forces were digging in and they were settling in for a long fight and they were not going to surrender and they were not going, they were going to fight to the very last man. So a land invasion of Japan, and there was one planned, would probably result in over 250,000 U.S. casualties. That's a conservative number. Some estimates put it over 1 million. All of the estimates on U.S. casualties for a land invasion of Japan state very clearly that the Japanese losses would have been much, much higher as the Japanese were mobilizing civilians to defend the homeland if a land invasion resulted. Another thing to consider is that there were 100,000 Allied prisoners of war in Japan. And based on past experiences of World War II, um, military commanders estimated they would probably be executed if we invaded Japan. And remember those Japanese soldiers that we leapfrogged on the way to Japan? Well, there are thousands of them still out in the Pacific. They're not going to surrender without a fight unless they get a very strong, clear message that their nation is defeated. So why the second bomb? Well, to be frank, the militarists in charge of Japan had not surrendered after three days. Also, the Soviet Union had quickly entered the war against Japan and was grabbing territory. They moved into northern China. They were moving into Korea. So, we don't want the Soviet Union to grab more land out in, in the Pacific. And on August 9th, 1945, three days after Hiroshima, a second bomb is dropped on the Japanese city of Nagasaki. And five days later, the emperor records a radio message explaining Japan's unconditional surrender. And even that required the emperor to fight off an attempted coup uh, to make sure that message was delivered. So why did the United States come out of this bloody war in such a strong position? Well... Overall, World War II accelerated the growth of American power, and it really devastated other world powers. World War II was the second de deadliest U.S. war behind only the Civil War. However, compared to the other allies, compared to other world powers, we have much smaller, less significant losses. U.S. territory is virtually untouched, while places like Europe and Japan had been bombed extensively. And the war also brings about economic health. The demand created by World War II is what finally, officially, completely ends the Great Depression. It brings the nation back to full employment. Also, some new products are invented and created during the war, and uh, those eventually will be applied to the private sector. Things like plastics and synthetic rubbers. During the war, as is the case in many U.S. wars, the federal government's power expanded. And it's going to retract a little bit after the war, but not all the way back to where it was before the war. Also, 
presidential power is going to increase over Congress. And that will retract a little bit after the war, but not all the way back to where it was before World War II. And finally, probably the most important reason for the U.S. emergence as a dominant world power after World War II is that we have an important role to play with things like dealing with Germany and dealing with Japan after the war. The isolationist policy that we used after World War I is no longer an option. So we were really kind of forced into our position as a world power because of our important role that we needed to play in the post-World War II era.